Okay. Assalamualaikum. My name is Isa Too. If you're new here, welcome. I should have recorded it. Okay. Okay, I'm recording. Hope you guys are all well. My name is Isa Too. Welcome. If you're new here, chill. I'm kind of ashy. Give me a second. I have like exactly 50 minutes to record this because I have class at 3.30. But I really want to get this YouTube video out and posted. I've been getting a lot of requests from people to do this video. So today I'm going to talk about my experience being a Muslim, a black Muslim at that, and hijabi at an Ivy League institution. I'm a senior at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. I am a dual degree student, so I'm studying entrepreneurial management. Um, in the Wharton School and I'm studying international studies with minors in French and Franklin studies and Africana studies. Um, so I'm graduating this year and I've just throughout all four years been receiving so many messages from fellow hijabis, fellow Africans, fellow Muslims asking me of like my experience and if I would recommend it and so Knowing that I'm going to be working next year and I'm not going to have as much time, I decided that it would be best if I just do a video that I can always send to people so that if they have questions, hopefully this video can answer it. Today, I want to talk about my experience as a freshman and like that adjust adjusting to like living on campus and everything. I'll talk about my parents and their thoughts regarding me coming to Penn. I'll also talk about it just like my experience with my MSA, my experience in my classes. I'll talk about prayer and fasting and Ramadan and all of this stuff that is part of just being Muslim. And I'll also talk about the um, social scene and stuff like that and how I have adjusted. So inshallah, I hope this video is helpful for you guys. If you have any more questions, always feel free to leave them down below in the comment section. I would prefer that over Instagram DMs because if it's in the comments and like other people can read it and also benefit from it. So inshallah, I hope this is helpful. So I guess I'll start by like just telling the story of like how I got to Penn and then after I talk about everything that I think I want to talk about, I'll then answer some questions that people gave me on Instagram. So first and foremost, my parents. So I know that when it's time to look for schools, a lot of hijabis are always worried because they're like, oh, I don't know if my parents want me to leave. I don't know if my parents will let me leave the state, et cetera, et cetera. And honestly, like that varies from parent to parent. And like, I don't know how your specific parents will react, but for me, my brother went to college, he went to Boston College, and then he graduated and went to Columbia University for med school. And my parents have always valued education. My mom's a teacher. So for her, like, she wants me and my brother to have the best opportunities. And as the daughter of immigrants, you know, they didn't come to America and like make all these sacrifices and work so hard to prevent us from taking advantage of different opportunities. So when it came time to apply for college, my parents were like, okay, what schools are you looking at? Like, what do you want to do? What are you interested in? And I was like, okay, like I wanna do business. So I know I wanna do business. I don't wanna be in the middle of nowhere. I want to be in a city. I don't wanna be too far from home because I, I just didn't wanna be far from home. Like I wanted to be able to go home um frequently i'm originally from washington dc which is like a two hour drive away from philly so i thought that was great i also wanted to be in an area that was muslim friendly and i think that's something that people should just keep in mind with any school you want to go to the area you're in can make a huge difference philadelphia has a lot of Muslims, a lot of black Muslims, and there's a lot of West African Muslims here as well. And so there's a lot, and I mean a lot of halal options. I only eat halal, so there's a, a lot of halal options. There's halal food trucks everywhere. There's halal restaurants there. Like I live down the street from a halal meat store and there's another one like a block away too. 
and then there's like multiple halal restaurants near me like walking distance and i only live like a 10 minute walk from campus so that's telling you that like there's a lot of options here so this is stuff that like i was considering and so literally what i did was i went on google and i was like top undergraduate business schools and wharton is the top one so well at least at that time it was i don't know about now but it was the top um undergraduate business program at the time especially in the east coast and so i started looking into like okay location all of this stuff and like for me coming to wharton for undergrad made the most sense the schools in dc i did not like I, I didn't like their programs. Um, they just didn't make sense for me. So when I told my parents, you know, I want to go to Wharton, to them it made sense because the reasons I was giving for wanting to come here all, all aligned. And so there was never any debate. Like, we, I never argued with my parents about wanting to come here. Something that I'll say is that, like, I've never given my parents a reason to doubt me. There was never the worry that I would come to college and like completely change and like abandon everything they instilled in me and stuff like that. So I think that also played a role. Something that my mom always says is that she knows that anything that I do is because I want to do it. Like she doesn't think I'm someone who's easily peer pressured and that's something that she knows about me and my brother, which is why she doesn't worry about letting us go out into the world because she's already raised us the way she wanted to and she knows what she's instilled in us and so she trusts us i just never had to deal with the bickering and the arguing and the trying to plead my case with my parents but i will say if you're trying to plead your case with your parents you need to actually have good reasons for why you want to go to the school you want to go to because if you don't then it's kind of like you know like you're not really helping your case um i think also a lot of immigrant parents love when you say an ivy league so <laughs> that also helps anyways so for me everything was pointing to wharton i was like if i don't go to wharton i don't know where i'm gonna go because i'm not liking any of these other schools i was also looking at like emory um i looked at georgetown um, I think I looked at Columbia, but I just did not like any of the other schools. Like Emory, I had my interview and I hated the school because they have a ton of race issues. I was just like, child, Allah, I was like praying. I was like, Allah, like, I don't know. Like, if I don't get into the school, like, I don't know what I'm gonna do because this is the only school I can see myself at. And so I applied early decision and I got in. And fun fact, so I was gonna apply just to be in Wharton, the business school. And then um, as I was applying, there was like a drop down menu for like, what are you applying for? And there was something called the Huntsman Program, International Studies and Business. I was like, huh, what is this? What is this? That's how you know I didn't do enough research onto like everything. But anyways, um, so I looked up and it was like a uh, one week before the early decision deadline. And so I look at this program and it's like, oh, there's like intense language learning. There's like international studies, da, 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 global perspective. I was like, this is me. This is what I need. This is what I want. So within that last week, I like scrambled to like to write the additional essay and everything. And then I ended up applying for Huntsman and I got in super exciting super exciting and so when i got in it was like no question about it like my parents knew that that was the plan um penn gives need-based financial aid so money was not the problem like if you're low income you're practically not gonna pay anything to go to an ivy league let's just put that out there that also makes a lot of parents more excited to let you go <laughs> so yeah so i'll say that like first thing I was nervous about was that in my program I was required to live in a specific dorm and in that specific dorm I had to share a room with someone and I was not excited for that because I was like oh my god I don't know who I'm gonna share a room with and then also there was communal bathrooms and I was like oh my god in my hijab I'd be like ah oh, ah oh. and like the the um the hall was co-ed so like I was like oh my god how am I gonna get into the shower mm, like I, I was I was worried I was like I don't know how I'm gonna get shower and like as a hijabi and 
uh, and what if I walk into the hallway and then I run into a guy? I was just, I was just, I was not excited about that. So, luckily, um, one of my friends bought me, I think for my birthday or something. I don't know what she, like, I think it was my birthday gift. But she bought me this long robe. And um, it reached the floor. It was super long. And so I would always wear that when I was going to the shower. And I would, like, wear a bonnet and the hood. And so, like, you wouldn't be able to see nut nothing. And I would just carry my towel and then and, then, and I was really lucky because the communal bathroom was right across from my room so I would just like dash but um the robe worked well if I could find the link I'll link it down below but that's what I used and so I didn't have a problem also when I moved in you know they make you guys sign like a room agreement type thing and so I think it's super important to be very clear with your roommate she was a stranger I did not know her like that was my first time meeting her She's in my program though, but when we sat and we talked, I was very clear and not shy to say like, you cannot bring a guy into the room without telling me first because I'm a hijabi. Just just like setting clear ground rules. I also was like, I'll be praying sometimes so you might hear me in the morning. Um, I'll be fasting sometimes so you might hear me eating in the morning or you might see me eating in the morning. So just things like that, like being very clear with her. Um, and if she did do something that was like, okay girl, like you're pushing the boundaries, have a talk with her. And I think that's also just a thing, like when you go to college, you need to get better at communicating and advocating for yourself and just being firm and standing on the fact that like you have boundaries and there's nothing wrong with that. I think sometimes people go into like hijabis and fellow Muslims will go to a place and feel like as if no one has to accommodate for you. But like the truth is like accommodating for someone's religion, that is just respect. Like if you have a roommate, like they should have the decency to say, okay, like I won't bring guys into the room randomly without letting you know first, you know, like stuff like that. So you should feel comfortable requesting that. And if someone cannot do that, requesting a, a different roommate like that should not be a problem i do know a lot of other hijabis that got like singles or got suites with just girls that worked for them penn has like a muslim residential program for upperclassmen so like they have a floor where like half of the floor is just muslims i never lived there i didn't feel the need to but for people who are interested Penn does have that and I, I don't know if other schools do but I can only speak on my school so um freshman year honestly I feel like everything was going pretty smooth the only instance there was this one guy and <laughs> it's so funny because we actually ended up becoming friends but he would use the girl's bathroom at night and like in the morning and stuff because it was near his room and he didn't feel like going to the other side of the hallway where like the men and the co-ed bathroom was and so one day I just went to the bathroom and like thank god I had not taken off my bonnet or anything but he came out of the stall and I was just like and so <laughs> I sent a message in like the hall like the group chat and I was like um can guys stay in the guy's bathroom because I'm a hijabi and that's not gonna work. And then everyone was like laughing and I thought it was the funniest thing in the world, but he stopped doing it cause it made sense, you know? So yeah, don't be afraid to speak up for yourself. Moving on, uh, what else? Um, my MSA had a lot of events my freshman year, but honestly, I was not involved in my MSA that much. I'm still not involved in my MSA that much. I go to some events, like they have ice skating events i go during ramadan they give out iftar i'll go uh <laughs> sometimes they'll have like gbms i'll go um you know repping my msa today but i'm not that involved there are black muslims that are involved though but personally it's not my it's not my cup of tea pen also has a group called Sapello, which died during the pandemic <laughs> but it was a black muslim student group and they would bring like speakers and have like events for black muslims which was also really nice i will say that like when you look at demographics the ivy leagues don't look diverse but there's so many students that 
when you actually get here there's a lot of us like there's a lot of muslims here there's a good amount of us but like in your class you'll probably be the only one but then like if there's an msa event there's a ton of muslims you know if you get what i'm saying just like being african like in my classes especially in wharton chances are i'm like one of two africans and some of my college classes they'll be like 10 africans in the class but then if i go to like a pan-african students association meeting there's a ton of us like we're deep like there's so many of us so even though there's not like we're not the majority there's a lot of us like trust me there's a lot of us so there's that so making friends a lot of my friends are not muslim i'll just be very transparent with that but i do have some muslim friends my first muslim friend at penn i met her because she lived in the same building but technically she didn't really live in the building because she was going home because she lives in philly so she was going home every night but she had a dorm <laughs> Because, like, Penn requires that you live on campus your freshman year. So she had a dorm that was given to Penn to her for free. But then she was, like, going home. Because her parents didn't want her to live on campus. But um, I met her at, like, one of our dorm events. And I saw her and I was like, oh, my God, another hijabi. And so that was, like, my first Muslim friend. We're still friends. And then um, just naturally, like, I met other Muslims through, like, my classes, through MSA through the African Students Association, because you know, a lot of West Africans are Muslim. Not everyone, like, but a lot of West Africans are Muslim. So there's a good amount of black Muslims here. There's, there's a lot of like Sudanese, there's some Southeast Asians, there's some Arabs, you know, North Africans. Um, so there are a lot of Muslims here. <sighs> oh, do that, okay. So in terms of prayer, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. My freshman year, I was not praying on time. I would just go to all my class at the end of the day, pray everything. I was waking up for Fajr, which was not hard because like Fajr time, because Fajr time, like everyone's asleep. So occasionally maybe there's someone else in the bathroom, but like going and making wudu was really easy. I like always made wudu in the shower. Like I wouldn't do it in the sink because I was like, that's ghetto, it's communal bathrooms no i used to always make wudu in the showers um but i would i wake up from hajj no problems my msa has juma on fridays i never went to juma prayer because i had classes all the time and i'm a woman so it's not like that big of a deal but now i go to juma because i live down the street from a mosque so yeah again philly has a lot of muslims so there's mosques like everywhere so I can just walk down the street and go to Juma prayer now. But my MSA did have Juma prayer. And I know I know there's a lot of people that go to that and they have like two sessions, but I always had class during both. So I never went my freshman year or my sophomore year. So yeah, that's just me. Ramadan was a bit tough, but not really. It was just tough because it was just adjusting to like not eating suhoor with your family and stuff like that um it's really important to make sure you don't have classes during the time you're breaking your fast because of the pandemic now because you can't eat in class but back then you know you could eat in class msa was really nice because they used to give us like iftar sometimes um they like negotiated with the school and made it so that we had like a suhoor program so like when you were getting dinner at night in the dining halls you could pick up like a to-go pack that you could eat for suhoor. So that was really nice. My school has a very, very active MSA and like our MSA is really, really good about making sure that we're being accommodated for. So for one, we have a halal dining hall, which it's like the smallest dining hall on campus, but it's there. So if you only eat halal like me, then you, you can eat in that dining hall and luckily for me my freshman year i lived in the building that had the halal dining hall so i would eat dinner in my pajamas like like i could literally like go downstairs get food and go back to my room like it was very convenient for me also we have a lot of prayer spaces around campus not gonna lie see i'm, gonna be, I'm just being honest with y'all 
my freshman year like i said i was not praying on time so i would just go to my classes and then pray in my room like i preferred to pray in my room but now i've been trying to do better with like praying on time and since i live off campus i can't just like run back to my room to pray so i've actually been using our prayer spaces more i'll try and see if i can like record some of them and include it in the video but if i don't have the chance i'm sorry um but we do have prayer spaces we don't have them in every single building but we have some in like every part of campus it is really hard for people to get prayer spaces because certain buildings don't have a lot of empty rooms but like for example in the Wharton like the um, Huntsman Hall we have a, we have a meditation room in there that has a prayer rug and basically what they've done it's like it's a quiet study room that has like a bunch of desks and a bunch of computers and stuff and then in the corner they put up like a barrier and a door and then like they put pillows there and stuff and put um a prayer mat and that's like a prayer space within like a quiet study room there's also like a religious center like a diverse religious center that's on campus called spark and in that space they have a wudu like station in the bathroom there uh, which is really nice uh, i didn't even know we had that until this year like i, I when i saw y'all i was not looking at all this stuff and even like on our msa website they have like a list of all the different prayer spaces and so in that religious center we can like make wudu and everything and there's like a prayer space right next to it so that's also nice we also have um and a place for msa but it's like shared with another group on campus but we do have a space for msa i don't really hang out there but i know a ton of muslims do i just don't but it's there for us so i know a lot of people probably pray there as well and they also have like dhikr nights and like quran recitation and like all this stuff together i, I just don't go i'm not gonna lie to y'all our MSA will bring speakers. So like, I remember during the pandemic, they brought Village Auntie to talk to us on Zoom, which was really cool. We've had like Yasmin Mogahed come and speak to us. Um, there's like a bunch of other people that have come, but like we get, we do, they like, they'll get speakers to come and speak to us, which is always really cool. In terms of my classes, I don't ever feel like being a Muslim is like a problem except y'all the only thing that sucks is if you're a black hijabi if you skip class your professor will know because like you're like the only one probably that's a black hijabi and so it's very easy for them to remember your face and like when it comes to like participation grading you know like there's some professors who they just like they don't really take notes on every single student and they don't make you have a name tag or anything so if they can remember you then like that sucks and that's what happens to me like professors will know if i'm not participating because they can recognize me like when they go into the system to do their grading it shows a picture of each student and you know how they can mix up some white kids they can mix up some asian kids like stuff like that but they're not gonna mix up the one black adopt in the class so that sucks as far as dealing with like white people and like people who have not interacted with a lot of muslims i don't know i don't care like i just i it's never been a problem for me i think just in general being a minority in like a pwi sometimes you'll feel some microaggressions or like you'll feel like people might not be listening to you in like a group or something but that's something that people experience at like a ton of schools and like i don't think i've experienced it just because i was muslim like my roommate is not muslim she's she's kenyan and she's christian and she's experienced like that type of stuff but it, it's not an everyday thing it's not a constant thing it's a once in a while you might feel something like that but like i feel like growing up as a minority you've experienced that at least one time in your life if you've been in like a diverse environment so for me it hasn't been bad like i i haven't felt out of place in my classes really um i just think that sometimes i'm in a class and i'm like i wish there was more diversity here because that would bring more perspectives to the conversation like that i'll say i do feel especially in wharton because wharton has like a lot of just like white males but 
there's other black hijabis in Wharton. There's other hijabis in Wharton. Um, oh my God, there was one, she got married like last year and um, I got to go to her wedding and she married like someone who was in our MSA. So they met through Penn, which is so cool. So cute, mashallah. And then um, another one of my black hijabi friends well, the other one wasn't black, but she was a hijab. The one, the, uh, one of my black hijabi friends that's in Wharton just got married. Not to someone from Penn, but yeah. So there's there's a lot of us. We're here. Um, I think there's more hijabis in the college, though. Like, a lot of people are pre-med and stuff like that. But we're here. Like, we're here. We're taking up space. We have spaces. We have our MSA. We have, like, like we're here. So you're not alone on campus like walking around campus especially i think two years ago i remember i was just like there's a lot more hijabis here like i don't know where y'all came from but like walking around campus there's a lot of hijabis like there's, there's a lot of us um so mashallah like we're like you're not gonna be the only person on campus that's hijabi the social scene um a lot of muslims make friends in msa a lot of muslims make friends in their other student groups with non-muslims like that's normal that's very easy to do as a black woman i made friends in african students association i made friends with people in my program um i made friends with people that lived in my dorm that's one of the easiest way to make friends is people in your dorm so making friends ain't that hard but you you gotta socialize you gotta socialize i will say i feel like at ivy leaks because it's so big and because people are coming from like all over the US, there's a friend for everyone. Like there you everyone can find their circle. Everyone can find their circle. Like everyone can find their circle. You will find a friend. Like that. So there's all types of people. Every type of person you can think of is at this freaking school. So I don't think finding friends is a problem. I think it's pretty easy. You just need to to, you gotta socialize you gotta socialize um i will say that like the social scene that was hard to navigate my freshman year because at penn there's like penn is known as like the party ivy like there, people love to party here and i don't like that like I don't, I don't like being around people drinking i don't like partying like that's just not my vibe a lot of hijabis are the same way so personally i like never was at parties i think i went to one party and it was because i was on the board for the african students association and we organized the party and i was like oh my god i feel like i have to go i went i hated it i left early like i should have never went and i never went to any other one <laughs> but um yeah so i'm sorry i keep checking the time because like i actually have class in like 40 minutes now but um I know that a lot of Muslims will feel like, dang, like, am I in, am I in the social scene? Like, am I going to make friends? Because everyone's making friends through parties. And one thing I can say as a singer is that it seems like that at first, but a lot of people that meet at parties don't end up becoming like really good friends. Like those aren't really the friends that last super long. I think the friends that last longer are the people that met through like, a club where like they've seen each other really regularly or they've met through a class or like through a trip or something or through their dorms i think dorms are the ones that last the longest and also like if you're in the same program as someone because i'm in the huntsman program and we all have to interact in some sort of capacity so i've met a lot of them and like most of my close friends are in huntsman so like my roommate right now is in huntsman so that's one of the ways i met people i know that like a lot of the black people in wharton met like that and our friends so it just you know like like you will make friends other ways like partying is not the only way to make friends and the people that party that's not where they're getting most of their friends from like those friendships don't last but don't worry about that especially like new student orientation those friends don't last so it doesn't make that big of a difference and what i tell all the new hijabis that ask me for advice at pen what i always tell them is be true to yourself stick to like what you're comfortable with stay firm in your boundaries do not do things you don't feel comfortable with because 
if you're partying and doing all this stuff that you don't want to do and you meet people like that and they continue to expect that from you now you've put yourself in a situation where you're friends with people who don't align with you but for me like I, my friends like some of them party but like i've met them in another area so they don't include me like with their drinking and those shenanigans you know like i'm the friend that they travel with i'm the friend that they do like other things with so they're never dragging me to parties and stuff like that and they know what i'm comfortable with and what i'm not comfortable with so i think just staying true to yourself will attract the right people because there's a lot of people not even like non-muslims there are non-muslims who don't drink there are non-muslims who don't like partying so you will meet your people don't worry about that like you don't need to be part of the party scene and this is coming from someone who is at a school where like there's fraternity there's a sororities like there's always parties going on but i didn't go to them and i'm fine i have friends like i'm good so don't worry about that last was it last year i don't remember i did a video i used to have like this um instagram where i used to, like do like different topics and talk about them with my friend Issa what me and Issa talked about we talked about assimilating in your first year which I feel like I've talked about um connecting with the Muslim community so Issa went to Cornell um and he said that like he would lead prayers sometimes for Juma um and stuff like that so like that was one way he became like more involved with um his his muslim community at cornell um and i think they also had like their juman prayers regularly and like ramadan stuff so yeah and then um isa also had talked about like the importance of self-discipline like when you come to these schools you just gotta you gotta stay true to yourself because um if you don't then you know it's easy to get lost and like you have to prioritize your prayer you need to stay on it um and if you do that you'll be fine but like it's if you don't prioritize it you can quickly lose it like you can quickly lose it because you don't have your parents you know tapping on your shoulder saying go pray so you have to like set the intention and like really check yourself and like check in with yourself and set goals for like what you want to be doing it's really good to to have muslim friends um who you can talk to about this stuff so yeah i wish i had that video but we me and isa never got to post it unfortunately because it got deleted but yeah um, so now I'm just gonna try and go through the questions that people sent me and I have exactly 10 minutes before I gotta go so I'm gonna go through these quickly um, but someone said have you ever experienced blatant my blatant racism or microaggressions if so how do you deal I've never experienced blatant racism microaggressions yes but I think microaggressions the way me and all of my friends non-muslim and muslim ha deal with them is for one if you feel comfortable call it out but sometimes you don't even realize that something's a microaggression until you leave the room and you're like that was not cool you know like that didn't make me feel good but i think the way we all deal with it is like venting with each other having your safe spaces whether that is the african students association whether that's the muslim students association whether that's just your close-knit group of friends like having those safe spaces is very important because you can talk to them about it you can vent to them they can support you you know like that's just really good like there's times where like i come home and i go to my roommate i'm like oh my god you won't believe what this person said to me today and like you know just vent to each other and so that i think that's how we deal with it i think that's how we all deal with it um having like your support system but never have experienced blatant racism and when you do experience blatant racism if that happens to you again safe spaces support systems people here will back you up like black people here will back you up if something happens when trump won the presidency there was things that happened and people came together and 
like you know supporting each other so um there's a community here i wouldn't worry too much about that but i'm speaking on behalf of penn and i think the other ivies like columbia and princeton will probably have like a similar type of thing and like harvard i don't know about dartmouth dartmouth don't nobody know nothing about them like i don't know they're like I don't hear anything about them. They don't come to Ivy conferences, like none of that. So I don't know. Are you sometimes the only Muslim or black Muslim in class? Very often, most of the time. This semester, there's one other black hijabi in one of my classes. Well, in two of my classes. My Wolof class, there's a Senegalese girl that's a hijabi that's in it. Um, I'm taking like a African woman in history class. And there's another black hijabi in that class. Um, my other class doesn't. My Wharton class doesn't, you know. Most of the time in my Wharton classes, I am the only one, but, well actually no I'm not. Cause like I've taken a lot of classes with other Africans that are Muslim. So I don't even be thinking about them sometimes. Like I don't even realize, you know, like something you just forget about. But yeah, I have had, a decent amount of classes with um other black muslims but usually there's only like a few of us or sometimes you might be the only one because what will happen is like some of us and in most cases like if we're in the same year we might be fulfilling requirements at the same time and we'll just be in the same class together or like i might be like hey like are you taking this class and we'll take it together stuff like that are there any prayer rooms yes i answered that there are not in every building, but in a lot of them. Um, what's your major and what do you want to do after college? Um, I talked about my major. Um, what I want to do after college. I, I'm going to be doing management consulting. So I'll be working for a big consulting firm. And I want to do entrepreneurship. Social entrepreneurship is my long-term goal. And I want to do that in Senegal, inshallah. That's my goal. Being low income, lower middle income at an Ivy, how does that impact the experience? Um, for one, you save money because, <laughs> woo, child, I had, oh my God, I completely forgot to talk about this, but I studied abroad the summer after my freshman year and that was an interesting experience. I did it in France, which that's like a whole nother topic, but I stayed with the Muslim family. Like my host family was Algerian it was during ramadan which is crazy but i got through it and it was it was not a horrible experience and I, it was all for free because i'm lower middle i'm like middle class but like lower middle class whatever so it was for free um i also went to india with a class for like a week and it was practically for free it opened a lot of doors and also being lower income, like they have like a lot of different programs here for us at Penn. So like there's like this place called the GIC where you can rent, like not rent, but like you can borrow textbooks every semester. So I've never had to buy a textbook. They also give us like access codes sometimes, but sometimes I've had to buy access codes, but they also like do try and like get us free access codes. What else? There's like Warren Figley events. There's just, Figley is first generation low income. There's also just like Figley events for all of Penn like students that are Figley. So like they, they try and like do a lot for us. And like a lot of my friends are Figley. So we're here, we're like, we're fine. Like you see the, the rich people and they're, they, they, they are here too, but like there's enough of us that like, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. Uh, but you'll have those experiences where like you're talking to someone and they say something and you're like I don't relate to that like you know because you're not rich but like they'll say something casually and you're like you know but it did open the door to like a lot more opportunities because there's so many resources here um and that's like one of the things I like the most about Penn is just like being at an Ivy League they have so much money so much money which means that they have so many opportunities so yeah, anyways, um, not a lot of people ask me questions, unfortunately. I was hoping that more people would ask questions because like 50 people told me I should do this video. 
but um i hope that i answered questions i hope that this was a bit like enlightening i guess i do want to do a video like when i'm graduating about my thoughts and my reflections and if i feel like pen was the right choice and stuff so inshallah that will be coming like in may probably i'll do that video but if you have any questions leave them down below i hope i've covered everything but yeah i hope this was helpful i have class that i need to get to but thank you for watching please don't be scared to attend an ivy league there's so many opportunities here i wish more people were like more africans and more muslims and just minorities were putting themselves out there and applying for ivies because there's just so much money here there's so many opportunities like it's crazy um the doors that it opens when you go to an ivy league like it's real um and also just like before I, I came to Penn I hadn't traveled to anywhere other than Senegal and since I've been here I've traveled to so many countries and like a lot of that came through Penn Alhamdulillah um but yeah so inshallah I'll do that video but thank you for watching I gotta head out bye